Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to go on a bit of an adventure using the Space Engine and go explore the system of UI Skutai, the biggest star we've discovered so far. We're going to check out some of the planets there, but most importantly we're going to talk about the facts about the star system and the star itself that you may have not known about before. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And the first uh, fact we're going to mention here is the distance to UIS Qtai from our beautiful planet Earth. Now you may actually think that because the star is so big it's pretty visible from our planet, it's easy to see, but the reality is that you can't actually see it with the naked eye. You have to use a telescope that's at least 4.5 inches in diameter for you to be able to see the star, despite its tremendous size, which is about 1780 times the size of our own uh, star, the Sun. The distance to the star and the system itself is about 9,500 light years away from us and it's toward the center of our galaxy. Now we're going to go there right now and we're going to go check it out. You'll notice that the mass of the star is actually not that big. It's only about maybe 10 masses of the sun and that makes it uh, not super massive. Meaning that when it actually goes supernova finally, it will only very likely create what's known as a neutron star. It probably not, it will even create a black hole. Now, why is it that this star is so big then? So if you were to actually put the uh, actual UI Skutai into the middle of our own solar system, it would go almost as far as Jupiter. This would basically be Jupiter right here orbiting around it and Mars, Earth, the uh, asteroid belt and other terrestrial planets would actually be inside of this. The orbit of Earth would be somewhere right here, maybe even closer. So, so yeah, why is it that uh, the star is so big? And the, the answer to that is that it's actually in its later stages of life when it sort of expanded to be a giant. And specifically here, it's known as a luminous supergiant. And uh, its density is extremely, extremely low in comparison to our sun. In other words, it doesn't have uh, that much material per volume. And because of this, the actual edges of the star are hard to define. We don't actually know the actual size of the star because we don't know if it starts here or here or even here. But just for fun, let's actually go and land on its surface and see what it looks like in Space Engine. So this is something that you don't get to do in real life, but you get to do in Space Engine. We can go and just smash right into the star right here. And so here we are on the surface of UI Skutai. Now this, if you if this is real, would actually be very, very, very not dense. It would almost feel like you're standing on top of a gas. You would probably be able to see through it as well. But since this is just a simulation, uh, it doesn't really look as realistic as it could be. Now, all right, so we're not really here to stand on the surfaces of stars and stuff. We're actually going to go and check out some of the planets that Space Engine has procedurally generated for us because we want to see how this star looks like from other planets and what the planets might actually be like here. Now, you may uh, think we've already discovered some planets in this system, but the reality is that because this star is so humongous and because it already has such a high luminosity, it's almost impossible to see any planets pass in front of it. Even if a planet passes here, the change in the luminosity is going to be so minuscule that we won't be able to distinguish it. And also the um, usual type of detection using the uh, movement of the star, basically the backwards and forwards movement or the sideways movement due to the gravity from a planet is also going to be impossible to use here because once again of the size of the star. And the other reason why we don't really know if there are any planets, and we'll probably never really find them unless we go here, is because this is what's known as a variable star. It actually changes its luminosity once in a while, specifically once every uh, 780 days. It kind of goes bright, not so bright, 
bright, not so bright. There's a lot of variable stars out there, and this is just one of them. And um, this also kind of impedes our ability to detect planets. But Space Engine, being a simulation, has quite a few. And the first one is a kind of a desert. It's, a, it's basically a mega Earth that's super hot and has uh, five moons around it. And if you were to actually land here, the temperature would be about 700 degrees Celsius. And so if you ever wondered what it might look like to stand on a planet uh, in the system of UIS Kutai, so you basically kind of see this and then suddenly you turn around and there's a humongous star right in front of you. That kind of burns your life pretty quickly, mostly because this is ridiculously hot. So this is just the first planet and this planet, um, just like pretty much every other planet in the system, has some moons here and they're kind of very similar to the actual planet because they were probably created in the same fashion from the same material as the planet itself and these are not particularly interesting. Now the first three planets in this system um, are pretty hot, even actually the first four planets. The next one is a mini Terra, basically an Earth-like terrestrial planet that's slightly smaller than Earth and here once again you can actually go and stand on the surface and even kind of fly around the surface here because there's a lot more features. And once again, if you look up into the sky, you'll see the tremendously large UI Skutai. And so these planets are a bit extreme. The temperatures um, here, mostly due to the amount of light produced by UI Skutai, are in 600s of Celsius. And that's basically even hotter than the temperature on the surface of Venus. The third planet, though, is a little bit cooler at 230 degrees Celsius. Still a little bit too hot for people, but getting better. And there is that one of the moons that it has right in front of us. It's actually a relatively large asteroid-like object that's orbiting around it in a very, very cool fashion. It's actually kind of spectacular, something that you don't see very often in Space Engine. But then we get to the uh, outer planets that slightly get a little bit cooler. And so this uh, first uh, gas giant, or hot sub-Jupiter, basically a gas giant that's slightly less than Jupiter in terms of mass, has uh, certain moons that already look a little bit better in terms of habitability. Now the temperature is still pretty hot, 100 degrees Celsius, but look at this one. It's actually a marine sub-aquarium. It's a marine world, very similar to our beautiful planet Earth, Except that, of course, the water here is boiling. Although, it's very likely that due to the pressures on the surface of this uh, moon, uh, the actual uh, liquid is probably still liquid, even though it's super hot. And the sunset, or possibly sunrise, or I guess UI Skutai rise, on this... Okay, that's UI Skutai set on this uh, moon is absolutely beautiful. Look at how gorgeous this is. Alright, so that's, that's pretty cool so far. And now we're going to reach the other uh, two planets that are a little bit colder and these are actually technically at least uh, would probably be suitable for uh, life or even suitable for colonization if we were to actually find them in real life and if they were actually a little bit closer to our solar sy system than they are right now. Now the main reason UI Skutai actually makes these first four planets so hot is because of its tremendous luminosity. Even from this distance, and now we're actually as far away from it as um, 150 times the distance of Earth from the Sun, 150 astronomical units. Um, even at these distances you can see it's very bright and produces enough warmth for this planet with beautiful rings. Uh, and so the luminosity of this star is about 56,000 times the luminosity of our own sun. And that's that's quite dramatic, actually. And um, in terms of what it's like in, uh, in color and in spectral type, it's known as an M4-1A um, star, and it's basically a red supergiant. These are quite common out there. They're not unusual, but this one is just tremendously large in comparison. And so of all of these uh, planets that we have here, all of them, including the moons, are at a temperature of about minus 24 degrees Celsius. So they're actually kind of closer to what Mars is like. In other words, they're kind of habitable, I guess, in some sense, in a weird way. And the last planet here is a cool Jupiter. It's basically a gas giant-like object, also with rings, 
So I guess it's technically a cool Saturn. And this object also has its own moons, and all of the moons here are pretty cold with temperatures of minus 100 degrees Celsius. And even though this last planet is actually pretty far away from UI Skutai, uh, you can kind of see it's still extremely large if you were to actually look at it from this distance. And the distance here is uh, 362 astronomical units. That's like 12 times more far away than Neptune is from our sun. So the distances here are quite dramatic. And even at this distance, this planet is actually getting some nice warmth from UI Skitai, which is quite interesting. But um, one of the things I actually wanted to mention before I finish this video is that um, this star was originally discovered quite a long time ago, but we just didn't know its size until very recently. We discovered the star back in 1860. This is like 150 years ago, and this was discovered by a German astronomer, actually several astronomers from the German Bonn University during um, one of those regular night surveys when they were looking for new stars. But uh, they had no idea what they've discovered, and they had no idea how large this star actually is. And so that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to show you UI Skutai Space Engine, give you a brief tour of this, and you can definitely check out more by yourself if you use Space Engine and just give you an idea of some of the interesting facts we know about this unusual star. Now, even at a tremendously far away distance, this star is actually still going to be quite easy to see. We're going to move away to a distance of, uh, let's go to a distance of about four light years, where you would kind of expect to be if you were um, uh, on a, in our own solar system and looking at the closest star, which is Proxima Centauri, and even at this distance, this star is going to be quite bright and quite easy to see. So right around here, we're going to stop and take a look at it again. And so you can kind of see that this is actually the brightest object in the night sky. And this is what it would look like if we were in its neighborhood at the distance of the closest star uh, to our own solar system. And so that's uh, UI Skitai in a nutshell. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And come back tomorrow to learn something else about something you may have not known before. See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And say goodbye to this beautiful star known as UI Skitai.